he came to U.S. and he studied at University of Arkansas, yes. MA, uh, Florida State University, MFA, Florida State University, PhD. Art education. He might have some more degrees he didn't <laughs> tell me about, <laughs> but he has enough degrees. Uh, he exhibits widely all over the state. And this, you know, today he was gracious enough to come and to share his art with us. So let's welcome Matt. Thank you. And he's going to take over. Thank you, everyone, uh, to come for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Nan Liu. You can see uh, it's my catalog. Uh, I'm like, already from China, uh, from Tianjin, near Beijing, uh, third biggest city. Uh, I grew up in Tianjin, kind of like a northeast China, uh, like Boston, you know, the ocean port, uh, hot, uh, one hour by the high speed train to Beijing. So, grew up in Tianjin and learned my art when I was very young, you know, like nine years old, I started picking up the brush uh, to, to start imitate the painting on the wall in, at my gra grandma's house. My grandma's uh, father has a good friend, Qi Bai Shi, he's a very famous Chinese brush painter, and he gave a painting to my gra great-grandfather as a gift. So I, when I was young, I never see the artist, but I saw the painting on the wall, I started pick up the brush and paint. So I, as I, I grow uh, to the middle school, I have an art teacher really inspired us. And then after school, uh, I paint, just start to learn how to draw it in the Western style, like uh, the cast, uh, you know, the cast, all of those still life. So that's the middle school. And uh, that time, never worry about grades, just come to art school in the art studio, draw. And I have several of my friends will become art major. Uh, to the 1992, I went to Nankai University, uh, studied Chinese brush painting. That's my undergrad study major. You can see some of my work I created during that time, uh, during my undergrad study, and especially in traditional Chinese brush painting. Uh, my professor, Fan Zeng, he's uh, one of the most uh, famous contemporary figurative painting in China. Uh, he have a personal museum in Japan. The Japanese built two pr foreigner, uh, like individual uh, museums. One is Picasso, one is Fan Zeng. So Fan Zeng is very famous. Now uh, he's uh, kind of like top top one or two uh, like an uh, auction prize uh, artist. Uh, he's in Beijing. I haven't seen him for a long time, but I studied the brush painting with him. And uh, you can see here when I to the 1999, I came to the United States. I studied my mar master in of art in art education in Little Rock, Arkansas. I received a, a, a scholarship so I can kind of continue my art education. I want to learn how to teach art, uh, see what uh, American how they uh, teach art. So I learned how, uh, from that year. After that, I started teaching uh, graduate school at FSU for my art education, uh, art education and PhD, also the MFA in painting. So I do two degrees, uh, spend uh, six years in Tallahassee. And then after that, I found a job at the FMU, Florida a and uh, University. Uh, my current painting is a life-size figurative painting of my student. Uh, so I, every day I'm surrounded by African-American students, uh, uh, traditional HBCU students. So uh, all of my students have felt energy, so they have uh, hairstyle, the backpack, you know, all of those uh, beautiful color. I surrounded by them, and then I feel, oh, this is my, you know, my inspiration. So I start stretch my own own canvas, like a big oil canvas, like a 80 by 70 inches, like a life size. So I start painting a serious painting. So here as some my catalog. Uh, so you can see the uh, my recent start, 2010. I start painting this. Uh, this is my my graduate school. I did this self portrait uh, using the French artist as an inspiration. The Bastien Lepage. He's one of my hero. So the, I use that 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 piece as myself self portrait before and after painting. That's I uh, Lake Jackson when I paint outside landscape. I did that in the graduate school. And then later on, I start painting this. Uh, student life series. That's my uh, current series. I, I work about now 14 pieces, big pieces, like a, uh, by last December I, I finished. And then the, the ink painting, I always paint on weekend. Uh, in Tallahassee, we have a Swamp Buddha group, like a, a group of uh, artists. We meet on Saturdays at, at the 621 Gallery. So we paint together every Saturday morning, like uh, 9.30 to 1, uh, like a 10.30 to 1. Uh, so that's a two and a half hour. So all of the paintings I create is on Saturday in, in the show. So tonight you will see it uh, when over, like four feet, uh, the paper size is four feet. So this is the oil painting. I, work uh, between like weekend, summer, between class, between teaching, you know, I create this campus life because the, you know, like some artists are must create something inspired from your life. That's my philosophy. So I feel uh, something, you know, really interesting, the color, the shape. So in this uh, series, it's a campus life. Uh, you will see the, my ink painting. Oh. 
So this catalog, uh, later if you're interested, you can look at this. So the, when I was young, uh, can I sit down? I just sit down there. So uh, when I was uh, very young, so I start imitate the painting, ink painting. So in China and Japan, Korea, so all of this Asian, Eastern Asian culture, uh, origin from China, the artists using ink and water to to draw to uh, practice calligraphy and the ink painting. You can see behind me here, uh, the on the wall, uh, this are this is called the Xie Yi painting. There are two major styles for Chinese brush painting. One is called the Xie Yi painting. Xie Yi means spontaneously express your feeling. Uh, the paper is raw paper. The Xuan paper we use is made from the natural environment, from the bamboo, the barn, from the tree, uh, and then the uh, natural straw. So all of these are. are produced in the Anhui province, the southern China, Yellow Mountain area. So that area, is the, the water, the natural resource are really beautiful. There's a tradition uh, in Xuan city, X-U-A-N, it's a, a ancient city, they made this type of paper. Very fragile, but very uh, good quality. Uh, so uh, the longest uh, the time for this is 1,000 years. So, so far, with over 1,000 years, this paper is still alive, and then the this all created uh, on the scrolls. Uh, when you finish the painting, you send to a special worker, they mount it for you. So like the, they add the fabric, that you can de de select the color, uh, so that makes the hanging scrolls. Uh, the, that before the, the Yuan Dynasty, the Yuan Dynasty, this style start popular, like Mongolia came in at uh, that time. Before Yuan Dynasty, the Song Dynasty, Tang and Song. Uh, Tang Dynasty, remember the three color horses? Remember those ceramic horses? That's from the Tang Dynasty. That time, uh, the horse is a very popular subject uh, during that time. Uh, the Silk Road start from the east to the west across the desert from Xi'an, the, that time called Chang'an, center of China, they cross to the Silk Road, uh, uh, <coughs> kind of a, a trade or cultural communication. So through the, so that time, uh, the, you can see the, the painting is painted on the yellow color silk. Uh, so it's not, it's on the fabric, the very refined surface. Uh, so this surface has been sized, so the surface is very smooth. Uh, it's not like the later on, it's more spontaneous, right? The art is uh, more spontaneous, but this one is very rigid, very clear. So kind of like a watercolor, you, through layers of wash, artists create a special color effect. Uh, so on this piece, uh, that's one of the painting I, uh, uh, one assignment in, in my college, I studied the third year, I think uh, one of our professors, she copied a masterpiece in the Forbidden City Museum. Uh, so she, uh, this is from a Tang Dynasty, uh, around uh, 970, around that time. Uh, so, you know, like uh, 1200 years ago, you know, like, so this is a very popular style. So this uh, co uh, concubine travel in spring season. So it's kind of depiction a, a scene of the, all of these female figure from the court. Uh, so they travel uh, on the horse uh, in spring. So we copied this in six weeks. Every morning, four hours, eight to twelve o'clock. The uh, you know the. First two weeks, we practiced outline, uh, freehand outline. We're using the small brushes like this. Uh, so see the tiny, tiny brush? Uh, the, the bamboo brush made, the concept is you use the soft materials to create the hardest line. So kind of like yin and yang, the philosophy, you know, the, the opposite character. So this fine tip part, uh, using your qi, the energy, like we call qi, qi is the energy, like a tai ji, you know, the, the qi. From your center of your body, you, you send it to the tip part of your brush, you draw the lines. So no mistakes, so you had to be practice every time before you start. To, so this piece, I remember first week, we, we, every morning we come in and just practice line, line drawing, freehand using the ink, uh, draw hundreds of lines. And then until, until you get that feeling, you mount the silk on the uh, board, drawing board and you start copy the master. So if later you can come closer to see the, the we do the on, uh, contour line first. So the philosophy is lines the foundation, uh, like a black and white, the black line. So on this piece, all of these horses have different tones. So when we add the ink, we had to dilute the ink into different tones. Lighter, lighter ink with water diluted. So you start kind of freehand draw. Uh, so you had to be very ready. So this the first week. Uh, second week, we finished all line, and then we start dyeing colors, only black and white. So that next layer will be we're using goat hair brush, uh, like this. A white hair, gold hair brush. This will wear soft, absorb, absorb a lot of water, so you can dilute it with two brush, one for color, one for water. So, for example, like the the shallow shadow around the edges, you can see here the a little bit lighter ink. So we're using the ink, uh, ink and water mix, and then 
when it's still wet, you use another brush, water brush, kind of smooth it out, kind of like wash, watercolor washes, so that get the transparency. So first layer, you, you, you mess it up, second layer, you couldn't cover it, because this, this technique is you had to through transparency, through layers, uh, washes. So for example, th this black, you couldn't achieve one layer, maybe 30 coats achieve that black. Uh, so that color you can see through, kind of like a glazing technique in oil painting, uh, like old master in Northern Renaissance, so they, they through glazing, uh, through transparent layers, washes, uh, to each layer let it dry, another layer on top. So that's the, the technique for gongbi painting, xie yi and gongbi, these are two different techniques. These are majorly the court painter style, so in the Song and Tang and Song popular. After that, Mongolia came in, we completely changed, the culture changed, it become raw. So we're using the raw paper, but today, today most artists still using this style, but these are rare uh, for the traditional school. My, my professor taught us like this. Uh, very few artists still working on this uh, traditional gongbi style. Okay, so uh, even after the, the dying colors, uh, the, all of these horses, you, you add the, the local tone, like the amber, the, uh, uh, the different brown color. Finish and fine detail on the fabric. You can see these flowers on, on her cloth here. It's freehand, uh, tiny brush, one time finish. So six weeks, um, every day, for uh, Monday to Friday, four hours, six weeks. Four. Exactly the same technique for all the masters. So we go through, in China, the this education system is different from here. So over there, at the beginning, you had to follow the teacher's rule, like uh, exactly what the teacher show you, you had to follow. So that's the calligraphy start. Now, so calligraphy and the painting never separate, because in that culture, uh, you know, the, in elementary school, we had to learn, uh, like in, in Chinese lang language class, you, you start at least 5,000 basic words. You can start reading the newspaper and, uh, you know, the, the daily life. So from first grade to the fifth grade, every day you learn new word and vocabulary. So the calligraphy is the way uh, artists show you, teachers show you how to, uh, kind of the way of life. Uh, how to hold your brush, uh, like the bamboo brush, they design like that, uh, the fine point, so you had to hold five finger, uh, like uh, the energy you can go through. Uh, the, the first three finger like this, last two inside. So when you push towards you, the, this two finger can help. The last two against going back. So when I draw lines, I can go this way or that way. So you dip some water. When you you buy the new brush, it's glued. It looks beautiful. But when you start first to use, you put in the warm water, let the glue out, so the brush can, can be used. So these are old brush I'll use many years. So this is a wolf hair brush, kind of like a. Uh, two different type of brush. One is the goat hair brush, like the white color, goat. Goat hair, very soft, absorb more water for color. And uh, these are the hard bristle. Uh, this is uh, a uh, bear, kind of, you know, something combined with the camel or bear. So there are two different types of hair. One is the hard bristle, one is the soft bristle. This uh, hard bristle you can use to, for the ink, the contour line texture for landscape. Software uh, hair you can use for the color, like give you a nice smooth tone. So two different type of brush. Some are smaller, like this one's for fine line. Uh, you can draw, if I, you dip some ink like that. If, for example, if you draw a line, you can see that your brush can very hold very easy for that line. Uh, uh, for the bigger brush, uh, like this one, this one designed for uh, calligraphy, so longer goat uh, hair. So you, you mix with your ink. Uh, the ink uh, is made from the, they burn the, you know, the pine tree, the, the pine, pine dust. You know, the, when they burn it, it, they collect the dust and put it with, uh, mix with the uh, rabbit skin glue, you know, all of this animal skin glue to make it like a dry ink stick. Traditional, we use the dry ink stick you grind with water on a special ink stone, like a special type of black stone uh, found in, in certain area in China. So these stones are, are very smooth, uh, so you can add some water, and then you have, I, I, I forgot to bring my ink stick, it's a dry ink stick, it's a uh, rectangle size. So you can grind it, add a little bit of water, grind it, uh, half hour before you practice, at ancient time, you, you, you come down, right? So you. You, you know, before every morning, you half hour, even more, you get plenty ink. That's another exercise for the calligraphy. So ink stone, the good ink stone, when you cover it, this in ink won't dry for a week. You know, so you can still use it. So that's a good quality. But, but the regular one, we couldn't promise. But the old one, uh, the best one, uh, they, they have different design, different size. Uh, so this is the basic for the uh, small size, easy to carry. So ink stone and ink. Today, we're just using the ready-made ink in the bottle. So this red star is a brand. So you can just open and pour very quick, very easy. But this ink,
maybe not as good as the, the traditional ink stick because the color tone is different. The traditional one maybe have a bluish tone or warm brownish tone because they add certain pigment into it. Also, over 100 years, the quality is still there. But this one, we don't know. Maybe over 50 years, the color fade, you know, so, but this is commercial easier for design for everyone practice. Uh, the, ink, the paper uh, made from, remember, su southern China is very fragile, uh, soft, uh, so it's uh, called shen paper. Uh, the, some paper have been sized, uh, animal skin glue, you know, like a seized on the top, so it's similar to the, the souk, so you can paint the gongbi style. But the, the raw paper, shen shen, we use that for the interact between ink and the color. Uh, that's a special uh, technique. So you see the brush. Uh, the brush is, uh, when I was young, I, I loved those artifacts. So the, the brush, our supply stores, I, I could try to get that brush. My mom didn't bought it for me, so I cried for a long time, so later she got one. So those are be uh, beautiful brushes uh, made, uh, especially the older some brush. Because each hair, they, they, they had to select the best stiff one from the thousands of hairs. You know, so uh, 2019, I went back to China to interview some craftsmen. So when they made the brush, th I saw the, the procedures, over 100 procedures. So like the, they select the hair, they had to trim it at the same height, select the best one. So some, not like the one, uh, you, know, you see the ceramics brush on the table over there. So you know, it's the, hair, the hair is very soft. They just put a lot of there. But the best one, they select the, the most, uh, yeah, more quality, the quality, so, you know. Yeah, so, so some brush like uh, quality uh, that's very important, and then the, you can select different side. Uh, this this bamboo roll here, you can roll it when you go outside paint to a landscape. You can roll it like that and put it under your arm. You know, very convenient. All right, the color we used is uh, similar watercolor based water based uh, ink. Yeah, and then the 18 color, 20 color, whatever you want, uh, the 12 colors based on your need. Uh, so this color, uh, Marie, uh, Marie's, uh, you can order on the, on the internet, Amazon, they have this. No. Yeah. So basic tools. Uh, artists practice calligraphy uh, when we were young. Can you pass this book? Yeah. You, you copy the masterpiece. So calligraphy uh, is invented based on the natural signs. You know, like the original, we have uh, 5,000 years, like uh, the history of the calligraphy. There are five different styles. Uh, so the earliest is the, from the bronze vessel. You remember those, they curved in the, the bronze vessel to using for the uh, ritual ceremony. So that's recorded historical events. But the, the first, uh, like uh, Cang Jie, Cang Jie is the first guy. He kind of looking the, in the nation, uh, nature and then start like uh, images looking. For example, let me show you. Uh, if you uh, draw the, the sun uh, the, the on the, in the sky, so you can see the original style for the drawing style is like this. Kind of like a pictograph, a drawing. That means sun. Uh, so today, uh, you know, we we writing it. So this is the drawing style, the earliest, uh, about 3,000 years ago. The popular, they use this one. So later on, it developed to Lee style. Lee style is kind of more horizontal, elongated style. So that that's the same character, changing style, more flat, elongated. Uh, today, the Kai style during the Tang Dynasty, everything kind of formalized. Tang Dynasty Kai style is more squared, so same character, like this. So today, newsprint paper, you know, do, formal print using this Kai style. Zhuan Li Kai, and then in daily life, when we're writing the cursive, cursive is more when you write a letter to friends with more cursive. So the cursive style is will be like this. The wild cursive. Wild cursive, like, like a flying grass, kind of like that, you know. So, something like that. Uh, but the, you can see the, the development from the rhythm, the traditional pictograph, drawing, uh, so developed to, to that. So the Japanese, during Tang Dynasty, they came to China to learn all the tea ceremony, architecture, you know, calligraphy. So the Japanese writing, maybe 50% is from the, the Kai style, uh, the, the Cao style, the wild cursive. So they, they put part of that, and then they put them together, recreate the new. So when you, when you see the, the Japanese cur uh, cursive writing, it's kind of similar to Cao style. But in China today, when not many people practice this, because these are, during that period of time, people, you know, like uh, many people kind of practice like that. But this is more advanced level. Everything cursive, you have to you have to know the rules and then practice to that stage. 
Uh, so that's a uh, calligraphy. Calligraphy, you see this uh, Lee style, the second one. You can see it in this book. So as artists, calligrapher, every day we copy, we, we practice from the old master. So this one book, I have two different Lee style. Uh, samples. So it's one is Cao Quan. So this is from the uh, ru stone rubbing. So because the uh, people died, famous people, they they, they write their na uh, their history, their life, uh, to kind of record their history of their life. And then those stones still left to maybe excavate from the under the tomb, whatever. So those being curved, the calligraphy being curved on top of that stone. So they rub it with the ink to print it out to get this. So this is a really good ref reflect at that time, the style. So this is the Li style, the second style. Uh, during Ta Han Dynasty, the second dyna uh, dynasty, like Qin and Han, Han is the, about 2,000 years ago, kind of Roman Roman area. Like, so this character is one from one style. So this style, Li style, is very beautiful, right? Look, look like a, a woman, like a beautiful, like slim, you know? So see, but this one, the second one, let me show you, Zhang Qian, Zhang Qianbei is the same period of time. Look like a man, like strong, heavy. But this all belong to the same Li style during that time, popular. But today, we never write this way. Uh, so, so, you know, from time, history. But as artists, you study. Uh, the, another book, I'll show you. This one is the Perceive. Remember I talked about the, the, when you're writing your, your letter to a friend. So, so this is the Kai style. Uh, so this book is in Tang Dynasty. See the Kai style, very rigid, squared. Uh, so this Ouyang Xun, this is another good example for the Kai style, the third one. Uh, so people learn to this to recognize all of these characters. Uh, so later on, the, the, the cursive, you can see the cursive. Uh, Wang Xizhi, the sage of the calligrapher. So he's, he can good, he good at five all different styles, become the sage. Everyone, you know, later on the king, love his work, collect all of his, uh, his pieces and put in his tomb, tomb. No one see the real one. He asked the other people copy the master Wang Xizhi's work. So today, everything we see is the copy from other people. Uh, the Xizhi is the sage. So he, he, can, he wrote this uh, cursive, uh, very famous. So through the history, uh, as a calligrapher, you practice your line. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of show you maybe that one, the least style a little bit. I'll kind of imitate one or two. You can see how I practice. Uh, every day, uh, at morning, uh, as a calligrapher, you wake up, you sit there, grind your ink, half hour and then you feel calm down uh, when you before you start practice you need to have the paper weight next to you the felt very important is absorbed ink from the surface you couldn't directly draw on the table it will stick together and the felt is ready so practice uh, so you you feel calm down everything ready uh, your book in front uh, like I'll just kind of maybe imitate a couple uh, characters <laughs> maybe the The third one from the right. Uh, least out. Uh, very slow. Uh, they call their the, uh, each stroke have their own way of the for this style. Uh, the warm head, goose tail. That's a special san tou yan wei. That's a special for least out. So the horizontal stroke. You must finish that beauty for create that beauty. So that's uh, the the warm head look like the shape of the warm head, the goose tail, feel that. Uh, so that's for Li style. Uh, so I'm copy the third letter on the right, uh, the Gao. Uh, this means the highs, the height, no, the height. Slow, uh, and each stroke, your energy, your qi, penetrate into the paper. I'm not supposed to talking, but I just kind of show you how this. Uh, so each stroke, your brush straight vertically with your paper, uh, your energy into the paper, you practice this. Uh, and uh, add your ink, mix a little bit of water, not too much. Uh, if it's too much, smear. Uh, and then the, each stroke, uh, the calligraphy is created based on the natural object. So you can see here, some are like a hook, kind of like a from the branches tree, the dots like a rock from the mountain. Uh, so those are, are from the nature. So this one have a special. So that's the third one on the goal. Uh, so I'll co continue copying another one. Maybe you can see uh, the, the last one on the left. Uh, Ran. Some artists uh, practice even quicker. But still, your energy, uh, your, your middle part of your brush, you can see see the trees of my, my brush. Uh, that will kind of cover that paper. 
kind of like a natural object growing. Uh, you see here, this stroke. Uh, the white space, very important in calligraphy. Uh, uh, when I look at the black lines, I also looking at the, uh, the see that this white negative space next to it. The goose tail, gradually lift your brush. Uh, and uh, the four dots, one to the left. The two have two middle in, in the middle. And there's one more dot, last one. Okay, uh, the, a good calligraphy piece. When you flip the paper, the energy, the color is supposed to be the same. That means your energy really into the paper. Uh, the cursive I write really quick, so you see that's a little bit superficial on the surface. So master, old master, when they write same energy into it. Uh, so beginner sometimes quick. Uh, this is a little bit too dry, but uh, this okay, good. Uh, so this uh, so squared. Uh, this is a little bit flat. Uh, so for that, from that, that's another example. Uh, so let me kind of create another piece. You can see how I create the whole piece. Uh, so practice calligraphy. You you understand how to arrange the line and color, uh, line and shape and, and space. So that help you for the painting. Uh, so a, a Chinese brush painter, they always uh, uh, practice calligraphy as the the foundation. Uh, So this is the least. Oh, it, let me write one of the cursive. Oh, you can see the, the cursive. Sometimes artists stand up. Oh, those are the deep little bit water mixed with your ink. Uh, see, I'll create that piece, maybe a, a little bit wor different version. Oh, the Jing Wu Ba Ji Xin Yu Wan Ren. That means your spirit travel among uh, eight different directions in the universe. Like kind of artists have a freedom, like, and then your heart uh, get uh, achieve uh, to the uh, millions high mountains, like the the peak of mountains. So you're really free yourself, like a Taoism. So the you the, the natural universe space artists must be free. You can create, right? So that's the, the spirit. So Jing Wu Ba Ji Xin Yu Wan Ren, eight different characters. So I'll write a little bit more cursive than that one. <laughs> Uh, the paperweight helps to make the, you know, this one. Okay. So these four dots are, sip, are over here. You see these four dots in this style, more cursive flow. Uh, That's the whole piece from beginning to the end. Uh, same content, but a little more cursive, wild cursive. Uh, you can feel the, uh, even the wild cursive, the each stroke have a relation. You can see the, the flow of this stroke, right? The, the relation. Uh, so that's the wild cursive, uh, kind of xing cao, xing cao style. Uh, when you finish, uh, artists always sign their name. Uh, you can see all of the calligraphy. I have the title, for example, like this painting. Uh, this is Chrysanthemum in blossom in the fall season, right? So the artist signed uh, the uh, fall season, the, the you know certain uh, poem 
a poet, you know, like a poem, like a two sentence or one sentence, represent the meaning of the content, uh, the year, what, or when you you create that, so that or the place where you created, who created. So, my name Liu Nan is here, my studio's name. Uh, so that time in the fall season, uh, we kind of be seeing the home sometime the moon, uh, the you uh, use the moon festival. So we I pinned that piece uh, to uh, blossom. So here uh, I can sign the. The uh, this year, Xin uh, Xin Chou. Xin Chou is the year of the ox. Uh, yeah, the, this year is twelfth zodiac. Zodiac. So the year of ox. Using smaller character, Xin Chou. Mid fall, mid autumn. Liu, uh, my family name, Liu, Nan, first name. Over there, a uh, family name always first, first name last. Here, first name first, the culture difference. Uh, yourself is more important. There, the family's history is more important. Liu Nan, uh, right at state of Florida. Okay, so that's the sign of the artist's name, the place where I created the time. Uh, after that, er every artist have their own uh, stamp. Uh, the stamp is a name. Uh, there are two different types. One is the squared one. Is your name, artist's name, authentic, kind of like at the end of your piece, you add that piece represent that's Lunan's artwork, kind of like Albert Dura. So he has his design A D. So that's an authentic symbol. So this stone is special. You can collect different. The best ones, some are look like jade, you know, very beautiful. Uh, but the, the paint uh, is a special pigment uh, using the cotton and the red saladin, you know, all of those pigments. But, but this paint is forever, never disappears. So when you burn the painting in the ashes, the, the red color is still shining. You know, that's a star like that. So these are very expensive, the red paint. So when you have that, uh, you, put, you can put a magazine or some bo a book, maybe. Yeah, let me use. Uh, can you pass me that book? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Sometimes I use the back of the book. So you put something under. You add this. That gives a better pressure. So it must be the center of this. And then one press. Do not try to open it and see it again. Then that will blurred. <laughs> Yeah, so Liu Nan calligraphy and painting. Uh, but another type of the, that's a special meaning, uh, like round, circle, oval, those are on the top. That represents the, the heaven. Never use the round one at the bottom. Uh, the, this represents the earth, earth, the squared one. So we have that uh, idea. So you can put it on top. Uh, another way, uh, why they put a, uh, a stem on top? Uh, that's the beginning, that's the end. Uh, also, when you send to the people who mount the painting, they won't cut too much if you have this at the corner. If you do not have one, they cut the composition. Uh, so, so this one, put it over here. Yeah. So this one is a uh, for one of my uh, my landscape painting. Uh, my my heart is uh, travel among the high mountains and in the cloud. So it's kind of like a, for the uh, calligraphy and the landscape. So a uh, calligraphy piece finished, uh, a cursive one. Okay. So when you finish, you can roll it and then send to the people who will mount it at the at another piece under, and then they add the fabric and then the, the hanging weight. Uh, there are different ways of mounting: horizontal way. Or vertical, or the calligraphy. Like, see the, the two piece calligraphy next to the major center piece. Uh, this is called Zhong Tang. This is called the Dui. So there's a couple. So that one do not have an outside handle. Uh, so there's a special way of design for mounting. There's another piece back there for a uh, big calligraphy behind. So that's that one two color. You see the, the fabric have two color. You can you can choose the fabric. There are even more complicated colors you can choose. The more the more expensive. The more time. Uh, traditionally, when they mount the piece, they on the, in the studio on the wall four weeks, at least four weeks, that makes the piece really flat. Uh, if you see a, a screw like that warped, 
that's not good because that not really follow the traditional way because the glue is all natural made materials. When you mount it in a special room, there's humid and the, water, the temperature very strict. So four, four weeks at least you, you, you mount it, uh, let it dry on the wall. Then you take it off, add the fabric. That's, but today, all the people are doing it very quick. So you can see this one have a little bit cur uh, warped, right? So, so after you hang in your room, it's warped. And that's not really good. Uh, the best one is supposed to be really flat. OK, so that's mounting. Uh, after the calligraphy, maybe I'll paint a, a chrysanthemum, a small piece. You can see how I paint the procedure. After that, maybe I'll, I'll do a portrait, like a, maybe I find a volunteer, maybe someone sits here as a model. I, I can paint, OK? Uh, yeah, so next one, we have time. Yeah, yeah. So next one, do a chrysanthemum. So when you practice calligraphy, that's part of the exercise every day. Uh, but uh, as a painter, uh, you, you uh, go outside, uh, sketch or observe nature. Uh, for example, uh, you travel uh, to the lake, sit there to see the, the, the beauty of the pine tree, uh, the, you know, the birds, whatever. Uh, so you see that, that bird, uh, the blue jay, you know, blue jay, I, I paint, uh, one time I see that next to the lake, I come back to create a lotus flower and then a diagonal composition. He's resting on that branch. So that's the moment. So artists paint in the different uh, composition and subjects. Uh, so let me do just a, a chrysanthemum, like a, maybe a two grooves. You can see how I paint. Uh, in Chinese brush painting, the ink uh, is always the, the bone. We call the structure, the bone. And the flesh is the tone, the color. Uh, so it's kind of like a human being. We have a bone structure inside. So the contour lines, the, the ink lines, the, the foundation. The beginning. Uh, so my, my school, some school like a, called a boneless style, like a no no outline. They only using color. So that's a different style. But uh, my school, my professor taught us, you need to practice line at the foundation at the beginning, uh, many times. Once you get a really nice contour line, then you start a color. Uh, so if I I do the. you can. If you want to dilute the ink, you can add a little more water into it. You see that? Uh, and then I always use two plates, one for the white for the ink, one for the color. Uh, the color one and the uh, ink never mix together. So you can control the lightness or the darkness. Paper towel will help uh, because as a beginner, sometimes when you practice, hard to control the water and the proportion of the water and the ink. You can use this absorb. You can test first. Too dry, add a little bit more water. Too dark, lighten up a little more water. You know, all right. okay. Five finger hold. Uh, you can put an egg inside, hollow. Not like this. This you block your energy, your chi. So this hollowed. You can put it. So five finger. Uh, this designed for the holding. So no lower than here. If lower, the ink might get onto your fingers. So you see this mark here. Uh, if you stand up, no higher than there. So when you stand up, you hold the brush not too high to here. Uh, that's a wrap. So, so most of the brush designed like that, but some are not. Uh, so this one design shows you that. So if, if I start over here, outline. Uh, Uh, CE style is more spontaneous. And that means your energy flow, you control the uh, the, the shape uh, and the energy in the line. Uh, so one flower in the center, a little bit darker dots. Uh, you can keep adding the petal through layers. Uh, using the tip part of the brush, not the bottom. Uh, the, this is the trick. Some artists like push down the brush like that. That ruins your bristle. So, Never use brush like that. Uh, that that's not good. So point it uh, and uh, make using the tip. I'm talking so it becomes dark ink again. So supposed to be lighter ink. Yeah. Yeah. One. Uh, you can do a couple flower as a group. Maybe another one under. Uh, you can see part of the the other flower.
Sometimes you can start from the center. Uh, the petal kind of have different perspectives. So this one from the center, growing out. Some are even more curved. Uh, there are different types of the, some are more curved for the, the inside, uh, for the paddle. Uh, you can do it like, you know. Alright, so you can do another groove on top. <coughs> uh, distance could be a little bit lighter, uh, a little bit uh, lighter tone. Sometimes you have some, uh, like a bud, or not blossom yet, so you can add those, uh, for example, like a, next to the, the major ones, uh, kind of like a triangle shape, triangle, you know, semi, well, some are kind of blossom a little bit, you know, a smaller one. Uh, After the flower, you can start the stem and the leaves. Uh, so that's using darker ink. So, but I'll add another group here. Okay. Once you uh, finish the major. Composition. You can always add if you want to add more. You can add more. You can switch brushes. Uh, so here, maybe another one under. Okay. Uh, now you switch to the bigger size brush. This one. Uh, when you start using the bigger side brush, uh, you can uh, mix with some color into it, like a little bit indigo, the blue, uh, darker blue with the ink. So it become a bluish kind of tone, right? Uh, bluish green. Uh, so this, uh, uh, each artist have their own style. But my school, the art professor told us, using the indigo like this, give a nice, cool tone. All right, so the, the leaves, uh, you can do the, the leaves, uh, you can do a little bit branch, dry. Uh, you can start, the leaves is always against the petal. Uh, so your brush can do this way, you can do, see, against the petal, not into the petal. Uh, so that makes the flower pop out. Uh, so see here, uh, two to three stroke as a group for the shape of the leaves. Uh, uh, some leaves are, are front, bended. Uh, uh, some are to the side way, based on the perspective. Uh, so the, the stem can connect. Uh, this one could be a different one. Uh, 
more leaves. Sometimes a little bit dry, that's fine. The ink intend to lighter after it completely dried. So now you look seems really dark, but after it dried, it's turned out lighter. So it might be a little bit darker. Some dots on the branch. Just two, and then I'll do another group here. Leaves. Treat it as a group, uh, one or two groups. Uh, maybe another group here in front. Okay, so there's another branch here. Okay, uh, between the two, and maybe draw the rocks, like the, the garden rocks, like a very dry stroke. Uh, you can add a little bit that. Sometimes uh, you have some uh, grass grow out. Oh. One, two, three. Oh. All right. So after this ink dried, wait for minutes, and let it come to dry, and then switch your color brush. Uh, the gold hair brush, for example, the white gold brush. Now I start color. In, uh, wait a couple of seconds because it's still wet. Uh, when it's dried, uh, for example, I, I use one, one groove yellow, maybe. Uh, the color, add water into it, and then mix as a section. Yeah. <coughs> so test the color, oh, it's still cold, it's still wet, so let it dry a little bit more. Uh, sometimes artists like to interact with water and the, the ink, uh, but I think I just go ahead and start. So one stroke, one time into the each petal. Uh, CAE is more kind of like a uh, spontaneous, so you can leave a little white, that's okay. Uh, but based on the outline, we start the color, color the ink. Uh, First one. Second one, I want to do maybe a different type, like a yellow orange, maybe. Oh, the second one. color and the ink will, might interact a little bit, uh, like the center still uh, a little bit wet. Uh, continue. Uh, use the tip part.
distance group could be cooler, uh, cooler color. I used the uh, kind of crimson, uh, uh, crimson, the cool crimson. You can mix a little bit of white into it. No, no. Uh, the distance will be this color. So some style, some artists uh, like the boneless style, like no outline. They're just directly using the color start, uh, and that's another style. But uh, my schools, we have a shape first, uh, color. <coughs> uh, this this paper, uh, kind of. Uh, each artist, you had to know the paper. Each brand have a different effect. So this one's kind of uh, I, I use for many years. So I know the Red Star that that's a brand name. Uh, I know how how the water will stop when the will stop. But uh, the beginner sometimes oh the the more expensive paper is more harder. You you feel oh it's hard to control <coughs> the <coughs> smear. But sometimes uh, the good paper they have a nice strokes. Uh, the when you it's like a spread, splash ink, uh, like a splash ink. You know, you see the the brush stroke leave a very interesting effect on the paper. Uh, so this the, <coughs> the color <coughs> for the paddle. Uh, <coughs> this one I forgot <coughs> the the bud. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> leaves. Right then, <coughs> maybe the yellow. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I add too much water, right? Like that one, you can use the paper towel, absorb it. No, no, kind of stop that. Uh, so next step, the final step, uh, the the leaves. Uh, we need to add some wings inside the line, the bones. Remember, uh, after this ink dried, you go back. Uh, so this take a little while at the time. See the, those short strokes. So you add the wing. Uh, so that's the last, the details on top. Uh, based on the perspective, uh, you can add uh, a little darker ink because the, if it's not dark enough, it's hard to see. Also, that connect this color leaves together. Uh, so that give a little more structure, more ink. Even this small ones, uh, when it's dried, when it mounted, you will see the uh, the detail. No, I think the <coughs> to <coughs> to prove a presentment on the on the paper, you know, you see that. Yeah. The top I can still add another flower, but I can, because of time I don't want to spend too much. Uh, you know, but you can see the two grooves, right? The foreground and the background, uh, the distance. Uh, some artists using the uh, when when they finish, uh, they they kind of add the uh, calligraphy on this side. Uh, so. I think we can just add the calligraphy on this side. Oh. Oop, too much water in there. So absorb. 
talking. Pick up my chrysanthemum. <laughs> Yeah, okay, all right, there. No, Taiju Dong Lisa, you ran Xian Nanshan. So pick up my chrysanthemum at the eastern side of the, my fence. Then I, I look up and see my the southern mountain. So that's uh, uh, from Tao Yuan Ming. <coughs> yeah, so I pick up my chrysanthemum at the eastern side of the, uh, under the, the fence. And then suddenly I look up the, the southern mountain over there. So it's kind of like a depict. <laughs> you you ran. Xian. Nan. Shen. Southern mountain. So then I'll send <coughs> calls, uh, Gulf Coast State College. <laughs> so I'll change a smaller brush, maybe. Yeah. Liu uh, Nan. Paint. Right. Gulf Coast, high one. State, Joe, Lee, Da Shui University, a uh, colleague, right? Yeah, yeah. Gulf Coast State College. <laughs> the, that's the end. <laughs> uh, so a long name. So I had <laughs> to get the get another stamp, a smaller stamp. Maybe let's see whether I can put that. No, maybe up to the side. Sometimes no place there. I will just put the. the Somewhere here. Yeah, let's get the, the magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can put it over here. That's the end. Okay. All right. So I think this will be the second one. All right. So I'll kind of let it dry, and now this one will give to Pavel for the gallery. Yeah. So, 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 the, and, uh, 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 so yeah, this is it. It's a, a demo, but not really finished. You can, uh, I can still work on the top a little more for the, the fence. Maybe, maybe I'll just add a couple strokes. For sometimes the artists add the, you know, a, a few brown, brown stroke, the brown color. Let me get the amber, the, sorry, this for the fence. How oh, you can. Mix the this one, a little bit of ink, darker brown. Now, can you talk about how you think about the like, which space to use it and see? And yeah, the so, yeah, the flower is uh, the gather in the intense in the middle, the focal point. This the secondary, and then the empty space make the contrast. Uh, here I can leave it um, uh, completely empty, but I want to add maybe a, a few because I, the the poet uh, the poem depict the the fence. Maybe I'll kind of using this fence as idea extend that to the, as the background. See that space even more diagonal because I feel something missing there. You know, like when I talk, sometimes the the concept is not there. But w when I'm looking back, now I feel oh maybe the fence could be. Uh, a little bit there, uh, kind of like a wooden piece or the bamboo piece, whatever. Uh, that could be the part of the background, you know, as a part of the the distance. Could be kind of coming out, okay, the fence. Uh, the top, maybe one more stroke. No, I think it gave a little more balance for the for the background. You know, so uh, they still have empty space on top, but uh, 
extend that diagonal further up. Uh, okay, so I think that's the, we'll, we'll put it somewhere on the table somewhere. That it okay, next, I think uh, we, I can do a demo for a portrait. I think, uh, you know, like a Tommy, right? That uh, Tammy, right? Uh, uh, that, that, yeah, that could sit there. Uh, I'll move the easel, I'll use that easel. I think it could be, can you, can maybe, uh, the model could be sit here, or maybe here. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, you can sit. Maybe somewhere here. I'll move the easel to here. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do the demo. You want me to help you? No, I, I'm okay. I'll, I'll get the board first, and then you can get the yeah. Just oh, sorry. Did I get the board? Yeah. The easel could be there. Yeah. No, that'll be fine. Uh, that could be 45 degrees like that. Okay. Yeah. So I'll kind of put here. Yeah, you can just sit down, relax. Yeah, relax. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, may, may, maybe uh, tilt it a little bit. Yeah, to that way. You can have the cover. That's fine. Yeah. That, that's that, that's part of the part. Maybe part of the uh, pandemic, right? The pandemic. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me grab my chair. <coughs> Okay, when we're painting from life, uh, we back up a little bit so I, I'm not too close to the, right? Um, let me move my stuff to my my table. Uh, do we have a smaller table or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I do, right? Uh, behind there, right? right here, yeah. yeah, we can move, yeah. Yeah, yes, that's good. Yeah, this, this one's good. Yeah, this the taller one's good, yeah. Thank you. Careful thing. I, I don't know. This one is a different one. Yeah, we might take that other one. Yeah. I think it's done. Maybe we'll use that one. Oh, that one's easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. Like a, I'll, this one, this, uh, uh, I'll, I'll grab. I'll, I'll do. I'll do it. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll grab. Color and uh, uh, maybe they just wet out a little bit. This. Before we start, uh, like uh, you always look in the model for a couple minutes, like a uh, yeah, tilt it like 45 degree maybe. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. You can change the chair if you feel comfortable. Yes, and relax. You know, so <laughs> yeah, maybe further back a little bit, just a little. Bit. Yes, yes, that's good. So uh, relax. You know, whatever you feel comfortable. Yeah, the leg, <laughs> like <a> not sleep. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can look at it any direct. Yeah, that direction is fine. Here is fine. Yeah. Okay, that any any way you feel comfortable, you know. Okay, that chair maybe not really comfortable. You're okay. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll just do the like a kind of major part of the maybe upper torso to the knee, maybe you know, based on the size of my paper. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. It should be, it should be a family point. <laughs> family point. <laughs> that take longer time. <laughs> All right. So just uh, kidding. Right. You can look at look look at that. Uh, yeah. Look look, uh, look 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 at the door. That's fine. All right. So uh, maybe I just stand up. Stand up. To me. Cause this easel kind of a little bit high. So I just yeah. Anyone? Yeah, you can look at that way. That's fine. Uh, okay. Let's see. Which one is better? Sit 
down. Yeah. So always start from the eye, you know, you know like a, so you look in the whole composition if I include to the to the you know to the knee uh, upper kind of like this area head about this big uh, and then the star I'm le uh, using I'm left-handed but I use my right hand the teacher te taught us using so you, I start from the left eye and then move to the right eye if you're left-handed the opposite uh, okay see yeah so the maybe I'll kind of start work on the left eye Counter line. Then eyebrow. How long did it take you then to move from like calligraphy to people? Uh, what was that transition like? That, that's the same time. In, in the college, we have uh, maybe based on the curriculum, several weeks of life drawings, every week, six weeks of uh, calligraphy. You know, so each semester you have all of different subjects based on weeks. Not like here, we have a whole semester, but that time over there is like six weeks, that, four weeks, that, you know. So it's four years, every year have calligraphy, life drawing. So at the beginning using contour line, later on we're using ink, more ink, you know, landscape painting. So you're doing it simultaneously? Simultaneously in the college. Uh, so, but all of these help each other, you know, like the calligraphy helps you how you control the brush, right? Uh, so, I'm not supposed to talking, <laughs> but uh, you know, like I just keep going. Like that. Uh, the Most important is the structure. Uh, get the structure, and then the spirits. Uh, likeness is the basic, you know, and then the next will be the uh, the spirit, the moment, and then you catch that moment. Right. The next will be the, the hair. <coughs> maybe I'll just uh, do the mask. Maybe.
there. Now I'll change a little bigger brush. And start the body, the neck.
shoulder. Use color, some green. line for the shoulder. That, that badge kind of going this one. All of this uh, gesture, uh, the contour line, will be connected based on that big shape. You know. uh, so now I'm kind of work on the arm. Uh, so this one kind of going back. start working on a little bit at the hand.
I might start spa splashing ink a little bit uh, for the, kind of the lower part of the bag. Splashing ink. to the green The basic composition now kind of lay out. Next will be the skin tone uh, after this ink dried. Okay, I can start at the skin tone a little bit. So using the another gold hair brush. Start the, maybe the eye, a little bit blue. Once you get the, uh, the shadow out, you can lay the basic skin tone, like the, the white, a little bit pendant red. A little bit yellow. So that's the overall tone. So. 
a certain area could have a little like the, the side of the face a little bit more red. Uh, forehead. More red. Nose. The second layer uh, kind of cover those white with this uh, skin tone. Could be a little more warmer, uh, so if not enough uh, for the front, this area, more yellow and red. The letter dry. Uh, the, now the lower section could be cooler. So you add a little bit of blue into it, the white, so that make a little bit darker value. Then switch another brush uh, for the mask. Uh, that's sky blue. Let's pop out. Let's add a little more. Using a bigger brush and a cover, very easy. Uh, darker area, a little more ink on this side. Darker blue. Uh, the skin tone could mix a little bit into it because the side might have a little bit of reflection from that, that skin. Uh, the bottom can use that color you know, kind of just mix them and drag, stroke. Oh, for that. Okay, let it dry, and then work on the arm. The Base tone, white, and uh, kind of red, a little bit kind of yellow. Uh, so. uh, the lower second could be a little more warmer. interact together, let it flow, you know, I'm gonna hold it away. Can add wet on wet, more red into it. Because the lines are already there, so I just don't worry about too much the shape. This time just focus on the, the value and color, warm and cool contrast. You know? uh. This one becomes secondary, so I don't want to focus on too much. So I just 
get this more cooler color. Go back to there. That hands I don't worry about later, but this side. Then go back to hair. Uh, the hair is the kind of a little bit more warmer. We'll use uh, the brush. Let's see. Look at this one. Uh, amber, yellow. Front, more yellow, warm color come forward, right? So we're gonna get a little more here. Side, a bit darker. Distance hair, a little bit dry stroke. Oh. Meanwhile, the forehead. way, different direction. Oh, through layers, you can add that. Next, uh, the, the pattern on the shirt, uh, the blue and the yellow, uh, so I start the blue, uh, using that as a pattern, kind of separate this white space. See that? Uh, I'm gonna uh, connect. Uh, in between, there's another uh, color. Pinkish, right? The pinkish. Uh, the, the. Uh, not exactly the same, that's okay, but the for CE style, catch the most important characteristic, you know, the, uh, the pattern. Uh, I think using that pattern as the blue first.
Yellow. Details can go back, touch on it. Uh, this area. Maybe just uh, suggest the the head, <laughs> you know, okay. picture there. Okay. Okay. So uh, inside here, I think the top uh, by now let it dry it a little bit too light. Go back uh, a little bit darker. See that? Uh, see that. Okay, I think uh, I'll stop here and uh, thank you for holding us. I think that gave you a, a basic view of how I did start this project. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> thank you. I think they were maybe too tired sitting there like this, you know. But uh, you can see the spontaneous style, CE style. How I not finished. Uh, I can still work on the, for example, the leg. Uh, I don't. You, you, know, you can just take a break and, and see the legs. I can just when it's still wet. I can add that tone that white area, right? Uh, and then this one too. Uh, and uh, you can see, uh, shut down this white, pure white from this corner, gradually fade away. Uh, and uh, uh, treat it as a, a big shape. So like this area, cover it, right? Uh, this one in. Uh, the, the ink area, now it's time, too much white spot shining. So I, I'll use a big brush, I'll go back, like this one, kind of mix my ink, that's called a splashing ink technique. You add all the, a lot of water mixed with this ink. So this kind of, uh, you can go back. Uh, for example here, too much flying white, I'll go, you know, kind of tone it. Uh, that creates a different layer of the gray tone. Uh, the hands go around it, not into it, otherwise a smear. Uh, you know, use the big brush kind of. See that white? L eliminate those and is there white? I'll squint your eye, look at it and see. See? Okay, I think I'll stop here for today. Uh, and uh, I'll sign the title, uh, maybe the <laughs> my name here and then. Uh, it should be a poem. <laughs> <laughs> Something about uh, so, uh, <laughs> Uh, timing, yeah. uh, timing. Okay, Chinese. I'll write in Chinese. <laughs> timing, uh, maybe or on this. Let me see. Which side better? That side. Okay. <laughs> so. Timing, in Chinese. Timing, <laughs> timing, uh, portraits. Okay. Ear of the ox. So do you have your students sit for you? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I ask them to sit. Uh, my friends or my students. So they, if they have time, they, they'll kind of sit there and uh, for me. Uh, my son, my daughter. Sometimes you know, like, Xinyu Zhongqiu, middle mid autumn. Okay, I'll, I'll stop here. Let me add the stem on top. And then the, the painting will be, will be done. Mm. Let me hold.
pull down the bar. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Ooh, yeah, that's it. So that's for today's demo, I think. Thank you for everyone. It's all time. So the impression. impression. Yeah. yeah, the the catalog for sale of ten dollar for each. If you like one, you can you can yeah you can buy one. Okay. Oh, so I, I have uh, ten books there available. All right. Uh, nice to see you, everyone here. And then tonight, uh, five o'clock. So yeah, tonight at yeah. five o'clock, the gallery open and uh, you'll see the yeah. You see his painting for the show, and then if you don't want to ask the questions now, you can always ask the questions later during the opening if you guys want to talk. So thank you for coming, and hopefully we'll see you a little bit later on. Thank you.